So speaking of next generation, as we uh, get set up here, um, in case uh, folks didn't know, every year the American Astronautical Society hosts something called the Student CanSat competition, hence the little rocket over there. Uh, we do this in uh, collaboration with the Naval Research Lab. Thanks. And uh, actually, the, the, the main man that, that puts this whole thing together, we, AAS does the logistics. But Ivan Galish, Ivan, you're here somewhere? Where are you? He's here, so, oh, there, there, back up there. So Ivan Galish is the, the main man that puts this whole thing together each year. Um, it's actually a really amazing and inspiring competition. Um, so, uh, the, so we, it challenges students to go through design, develop, and launch uh, uh, payloads from that rocket there. Um, and it gives students a taste of their future uh, in aerospace and hopefully, you know, gets them down the path uh, and, you know, it allows everybody else to see what, what they're really capable of. Every year this mission comes along and I say, nobody's ever going to do this and lots of them do. Um, and so uh, we bring in at this competition, we have over 100 teams from all over the world apply uh, and then we select, we down select after a PDR 40 to go to a launch weekend where they go through CDR, review, flight, post-flight review, everything like that, safety tests. Um, and this year, um, coincidentally, uh, the winner of the entire competition is from right here at UAH. Um, yeah. So for a few minutes, we'd like to welcome up the UAH team after Burner to talk about the competition a little bit and show off their, their success. Come on up, you guys. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Samantha Cortusio. I'm a junior electrical engineering student with UAH. Oh, and I'm Lewis. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm Lewis McAvoy. I'm an aerospace engineering student here at UAH. I'm a sophomore. Uh, and so uh, Jim did a great job uh, introducing uh, what the CANSAT competition is. Uh, but maybe you've been looking at the symposium schedule and wondering, well, what actually is the CANSAT itself? Well, to answer, CANSAT, uh, like he said, it's a design-build fly competition that gives university students an opportunity to experience the entire life cycle of an engineering project. Okay, great, but why is it being talked about this, uh, why is it being talked about at this symposium? Well, for that, it's because we're sponsored by AAS and Jim told us to. Uh, but really, it's because every panel and talk that I've been to, in fact, the one that we were just at, they always inevitably come to the future of space. And that inevitably leads to us, uh, rising students who are aiming to become engineers uh, in the workforce, either for industry or government. And time after time, from BBS to other conferences, the same question always get a gets asked. It just got asked like five minutes ago, in fact. What is the best way for a student to prepare, prepare to enter the engineering workforce? And the answer is inevitably internships and projects. Well, we're here today to give insight into that latter half. The CANSAT project is built to closely mimic a typical aerospace program with preliminary design reviews, testing requirements, and post-mission analysis. We follow an iterative design process that brings students from nothing to a full autonomous payload over the course of just eight months. But what is that CANSAT? And to answer, uh, it changes every year. It's perhaps easiest to define by what it does. Every year we see some similar requirements. We're required to develop ground stations to communicate remotely. We add sensor packages and cameras to record various data. This past year, though, the mission was modeled after a planetary lander. For 2023, we were challenged to build a payload that would launch on a rocket to 700 meters, where it would be ejected and fall under its first parachute at 15 meters per second. Then, at 500 meters, the payload would separate from the container, open an aerobrake, and now continue to fall at 20 meters per second. Finally, at the 200 meter mark, 
The second parachute deploys to slow the CANSAT to its landing speed of five meters per second. Once on the ground, the payload would have to attempt to upright itself and raise a flag 50 centimeters above the ground. And we do all of that in 700 grams or just about 1.5 pounds. So that's a lot to figure out, especially once you take into account that eight month timeline. Uh, this is a quick look at the schedule of the competition above. And as you can see, there's not a single month that does not have a major deadline on it. Uh, with all that in mind, uh, the Space Hardware Club at UAH has been sending teams to CANSAT competitions since 2008. Uh, precisely with that goal of entering the engineering workforce in mind. Every year, dozens of students see the uh, value of participating in this sort of experience. And since the end of COVID, UAH's three teams have placed first, second, and third in the U.S. every year. We often get asked, how do we manage to maintain this level of consistency year to year, uh, especially despite the fact that we always have new members every year. And for this, I'll point to the club, the Space Hardware Club. Uh, if you've been on UAH's campus for an engineering event, you've probably run across someone espousing the benefits of joining the Space Hardware Club to some poor, unsuspecting freshman student. Uh, really, though, it's unlike anything that I've seen at any other campus. It's a student-run, student-led club with more than 300 members in 15 projects. We dabble in all sides of engineering from every discipline. We do larger scale autonomous payload operations. We do high altitude ballooning, high powered rocketry, student run space missions, really anything that you could want as an engineering student all under one roof. And if you'd like to learn more about any of these, I'd really recommend going to the poster session that's happening uh, after this next talk by uh, Destin Sandlin because it is, uh, it has some of these projects uh, featured posters in it. Now, CANSAT specifically is really only a stepping stone to some of these larger, more complicated projects. And that's mainly because the competition requires that they be on isolated teams of 10 without outside help. But there is one important aspect of the club that they can draw from, and it's one that I think is the most important. Uh, despite the rules getting posted in August for CANSAT, we wait until the end of October for freshmen to complete our training program before team formation. Again, I will say I do not know a single other university that offers this kind of experience. Free of charge, incoming freshmen get to design, build, and fly a payload on one of five challenges right off the bat in their college career. Each year, for CANSAT specifically, 64 students, eight teams of eight, are brought together to build a CANSAT based off a previous year's design. Uh, the first month is design focused. We hold classes in the evening that teach just about everything. CAD, laser cutting, fiberglassing, soldering, PCB design, embedded programming, GUI design, uh, just to name a few. Uh, and then the second month is all about building, testing, failing, and then building again. Uh, and this all serves twofold. I know students who get opportunity out of doing two months all by itself, but a lot of students, however, get excited to try more difficult challenges. Uh, and from there, we now have a base that we can draw upon for our team selection each year. This past year, uh, this past two months, wrapped up less than a week ago, and it was incredibly successful. Seven of the eight teams completed their base mission, all essentially with a completed CANSAT prototype. And this uh, two-month involvement is reflected in our team statistics. Of course, we pull across all disciplines. We see uh, from both the College of Engineering and the College of Science, but we see a specifically large group of freshmen with nearly 90% of the entire body being underclassmen specifically, so that's freshmen or sophomores. Uh, and I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce the teams. This was Team Obsidian, uh, an entirely underclassmen team. This was team um, uh, Full Tilt, the team that I participated on for my sophomore year. And then this was team Afterburner, uh, the team that placed first place. It's eight freshman students, two sophomores, and they're going up against you know, teams of graduate students, teams that have you know, seniors that are doing this for senior design projects. And I'd like to now take, let Lewis talk about these designs as the team lead for Afterburner. All right. So one of the let's see that work here we go one of the most important positions that CANSAT puts their students in uh, is the need to rapidly iterate on both their mechanical and electrical designs uh, here we can see where afterburner started when they presented their PDR 
and where they ended when they finally flew their payload. Uh, most mechanical subsystems uh, changed drastically over the course of the competition, and their electrical systems PCB design also went through about five iterations before they procured their flight units. One of the major reasons that sets uh, SHC's teams apart from the rest of the teams is our capability to conduct test flights that put the CANSATs in the exact environment that we expect them to experience during competition. We use the same rocket motor, the same black powder charge, and the same rocket as the competition, so this is an ideal opportunity for the teams to learn about the state of their CANSAT and inevitably what needs to be fixed or changed before competition. Uh, here we can see another example of rapid design iteration, this time from Team Full Tilt. Uh, their mechanical design stayed pretty similar in principle, but had to iterate a great number of times to ensure their subsystems uh, would do what they were supposed to every time. They had, to initially, they had initially designed for two embedded PCBs, but switched to a more compact and efficient design by June. In order for a team to be competitive, they need to have a team that is very well-rounded and organized, and this is a team that is a great example of that. Obsidian's design featured four fiberglass plates being used as their aero brake that would double as their self-writing system. While their design changed the least, they still had to iterate on many of their mechanical and electrical systems as well. On the right, we can see an example of a container that these payloads would be housed inside of. The SHC has developed a proprietary method for creating these from fiberglass, which is significantly lighter than most alternatives. The competition finally culminates into a four-day event in Blacksburg, Virginia, featuring a pre-flight briefing, flight readiness reviews, flight day, post-flight reviews, and the awards ceremony. Firstly, the SHC team spends some of their time to rehearse for flight day by preparing their CANSATs for flight and running through their missions operations manual. Next, they'd head to Virginia Tech's campus to attend the CANSAT meet and greet, where they get to talk to other CANSAT teams from all over the world and enjoy some food. They then get to hear the pre-flight briefing, where they are informed about how the rest of the competition will be conducted. That next morning, they bring their CANSATs back to Virginia Tech's campus and present their hardware for their flight readiness review. Judges inspect the CANSAT for compliance with the mission guide, safety guidelines, and general robustness. On flight day, the CANSAT teams arrive, run through their mission operations manual one final time, present their CANSAT to be weighed, and finally turned into the judges. They then integrate their CANSAT into their flight day rocket, like we see this one here, go through their ground station checks, and finally, they get to fly. After they, after they either watch their payload perform beautifully or crash, uh, they go and collect their payload and data to create a post-flight review presented the next day, where they present to the judges how their CANSAT performed, how the data looked, and what the failure modes of their payloads were, if any. Finally, that evening, they make their way back to Virginia Tech and learn how they did at the award ceremony. I can truly say uh, that launch week was one of the most fun experiences of my life. Uh, getting to meet new people from all over the world and discuss a project that I, myself, and nine of my teammates had worked on for the past eight months was a really good time, and frankly, I wish the meet and greet lasted longer. Uh, on launch day, the whole team was entirely focused on the success of the payload, and it felt really great to see the team work as hard as they did and do it as a team. As we mentioned before, the Space Harbor Club has a history of placing well at this competition, and we're proud to say that we kept this streak this year as well. This year, Team Afterburner placed first place internationally and first place nationally. Team Obsidian placed fifth place internationally and second place nationally. And Team Full Tilt placed sixth place internationally and third place nationally. We are extremely proud of how we placed this year, especially considering 80% of the students who competed this year were underclassmen students who have completed almost no formal engineering courses and learned the majority of what they know from the Space Hour Club's two-month program as well as the mentorship the club provides to its members. As mentioned earlier, CANSET is an annual competition, so looking forward to this year's challenge, we see that the challenge has changed significantly compared to previous years. It is described as a planetary probe instrument delivery mission. This year's mission, along with the mechanical challenges, is also more electro software heavy, as it requires active stabilization on the payload to prevent it from tumbling or rotating. The 2024 SHC teams were formed on October 23rd of this year, with 30 bright minds from the two-month program ready and excited to use the skills they learned from two-month and apply them to this competition. This year, 93% of the students competing for the Space Harbor Club are freshmen. The Space Harbor Club has also made some adjustments to their strategy this year. They'll be flying multiple test flights in order to put the payloads in the environment they expect to fly multiple times, so by the time they fly in competition, it'll be their third demonstration flight. We also work to teach the two-monthers PCB design, laser cutting, and composite manufacturing in order to give them the skills and intuition they need to design their payloads efficiently and effectively. On the right of this slide here, the PCB and CAN-shaped payload are both pieces of hardware designed and built by this year's two-monthers. It was quite impressive. More than 50% of the SAC CANSAT participants from the, uh, this last year earned an internship for the 2023 summer term, despite over 80% of them uh, being either sophomore or freshman level students. Earning an internship this early in their college career is a huge accomplishment and is just one of the, uh, one of the ways that competing on an SAC CANSAT team has set up these students for success. Here are the logos of most of the companies that these students interned at this summer term. Now, none of this could be done without the financial support of each of our sponsors, the Alabama Space Grant Consortium, Blue Origin, the UAH College of Engineering, and the UAH College of Science. 
I'd like to thank each of these sponsors for their support of the Space Harbor Club, which is allowing us students to set ourselves up for success in the aerospace industry. The Space Harbor Club is excited to compete once again in the International CANSAT competition this year, and we look forward to what we'll learn, the opportunity to further our skills in the engineering field, and where these experiences will take us academically, personally, and of course, professionally. So I'd like to thank you guys for listening to our presentation, and I believe I'm turning this over to Jim. Is that true?